Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about writing equations of polar curves, specifically limissons. Uh, one of the examples will be a cardioid, but that's just a special case. So let's take a look at what we need to know. Um, first thing you're going to need to know is the unit circle angles. Um, and specifically, you're going to need to know the quadrantals, which are on the coordinate axes, so that shouldn't be a big deal. Second thing you need to know is how to graph sine and cosine in rectangular. So we're going to write equations for polar graphs, but it's going to come down to the graphs of sine and cosine in rectangular coordinates. And then after you create that graph, you're going to need to know how to write the equation of trig graphs in rectangular, so sine and cosine. Um, and then after that, we really need to know um, how polar graphs work. So you need to understand how they're traced out. Um, you need to understand that you can have negative r values for certain theta values. But after all of that, or actually, I guess I should mention, if you have any questions about any of these, look in the description because there's going to be um, links to videos that I've made about those topics. So let's do an example and see where we can go with it. So here we have this. It's a limisson. It doesn't have an inner loop. Um, so writing this equation is maybe the easiest of all the examples. I don't really think so. I think cardioid's easier. But um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a table of theta and r values. And I'm going to just start looking. So uh, positive x-axis is theta equals 0. So this point right here is at theta equals 0. And then it's a distance of 5 units from the origin. So that point um, is theta 0 and r is 5. Uh, I'm going to rotate counterclockwise to get to pi over 2. So that's this point. So that's going to be pi over 2. And you are 3 units from the origin. Rotate again to get to pi. So when you're facing pi, you're facing the negative x-axis, you're going to move 5 units in that direction. So it's pi and then positive 5. So that's uh, where polar can trip you up. The rectangular coordinate would be negative 5, 0. But in polar, it's um, r is 5 when theta is equal to pi. We're going to rotate um, another pi over 2 to get to 3 pi over 2. We'll be at this point. Uh, so you're facing 3 pi over 2, and you're moving forward. So you're going to get 3 pi over 2. You are positive 7, right? 7 units from the origin. And then if you keep going, you get back to um, that starting point when theta is 2 pi. All right, so these are the points that we're going to take and make into a rectangular graph. So I'm just going to set this all up. So we have this. Uh, I'm going to plot the points. So plot those. You look at those and you think, I could definitely fit a trig graph through that. So we put this. You look at that and you think, that is definitely a negative sine graph. So now we're just going to write the equation of that sine graph. So r is um, sinusoidal axis um, is 5. So it's 5. It's definitely a negative sine graph, so minus. The amplitude I could go up to or down to, so it's 2. And then we said it was a sine graph, so we're going to put sine, and there you go. That equation right there is the equation of the rectangular graph, but if you graph it in polar, it's the equation of this limisson that we have. So we did it. Uh, let's take a look at another example. So we're going to have this graph. So this is a cardioid, but a cardioid is um, just a special case of a limisson where the constant the coefficient and the constant are equal to each other. So same deal. Uh, we're going to do this for all of these. We're going to make a table with theta and r, and we're going to look through it. So for this one, I kind of know how this gets traced out. So I know that when theta is 0, I'm actually at the origin. It's important to know how they're traced out, or it's useful, I guess I should say. So that point right there, um, theta is 0, r is also 0. And then I'm going to rotate counterclockwise. So I'm rotating from theta equals 0 to theta equals pi over 2. I'm going to end up at this point. Um, so that's pi over 2, and I'm 3 units away from the origin. I'm going to rotate from pi over 2 to pi, um, and then go out 6 units. So I end up at this point. But remember, in polar, I'm facing pi, and I'm going in that direction 6 units. So it's going to be positive 6. Rotate again. So we get to this point. We're at 3 pi over 2. And at 3 pi over 2, I'm facing 3 pi over 2 and moving forward, so I get a positive r value. And then finish it off with 2 pi 0. Let's do the same thing. We're going to take this table, turn it into a graph in rectangular. So set that up, plot your points. If you look at this, you can definitely put a curve through it. And that, to me, looks like a negative cosine graph. So I'm going to write the equation. So r is. Um, the sinusoidal axis will be 3. That's kind of the middle of everything that's happening. 
um, it's negative cosine, so a minus sign. I can go three up and three down from the sinusoidal axis, so the amplitude is three, and then we said it was cosine. So there you go, that's an equation for this. But it turns out we could write two different equations. We could actually probably write an infinite number of equations, but another one kind of jumps out. So uh, I'm gonna set up everything again, and I'm gonna look at this from kind of different perspective. So I'm gonna say that when theta is zero, so I'm facing the positive x-axis, but I'm gonna end up at negative six. So I'm gonna say this point right here is theta is zero, r is negative six which feels weird at first, um, but maybe is almost even easier. I'm gonna rotate from theta equals zero to theta equals pi over two. So I'm facing up, but I'm gonna put my point here. So at pi over two, instead of moving forward along the positive y, I move backwards along the negative y axis, so I get pi over two, negative three. Uh, let's do it again. So I get to this point. So this point, I'm actually at pi, right? So I started at zero, where I walk backwards to negative six. Pi over two, I walk backwards to negative three. At pi, I don't walk at all, so I'm gonna get pi zero. Then three pi over two, instead of getting positive, I'm gonna get negative three again. And then at two pi, I'm just gonna get negative six again. So this is a little weirder in the setup, but as long as you're going counterclockwise, this kind of thing will work for you. Um, so let's set this up, plot the points. And you can see, actually, that these have exactly the same shape, this graph and the graph above. It's so similar, it's, a, it's identical, it's just like a vertical shift. Um, so I actually just copied and pasted the graph. Um, so let's do this. R is, so sinusoidal axis, kind of the middle, is negative three. Uh, amplitude, I can go up and down, well it's a negative, co it's a, yeah, it's a negative cosine, so let's put a minus. I can go up and down three units from the sinusoidal axis, so that's my amplitude, and then it's a cosine. So that's two separate things. So I'm gonna do one more example. I'm gonna do it two different ways. And this is gonna be a limason that has an inner loop. So let's think about that. Um, if you've plotted a lot of these in polar, you know that a limason, a negative cosine with an inner loop starts in the inner loop, which is probably the weirdest thing. So this point right here, uh, I'm facing zero. So I'm facing the positive x but I go backwards, so it has a negative r. So it's zero, negative one. Rotate to pi over two, and we're gonna go out four units from the origin. So facing pi over two going forward gives us pi over two is the angle, four is the radius. Rotate to pi, and we move forward. So we're facing pi and we move forward nine units. So we're gonna end up at pi, well, nine comma pi in, in polar, but in our table it's pi nine. Uh, rotate again. We get to this point, so the angle is three pi over two. We're actually going toward three pi over two, so we get a positive radius. And then finally, when we get to two pi, uh, we're facing the positive x again, but we're still going backwards, so we get negative one. So picking out those points is kind of the weirdest part of this process, um, but once we do it, we can set up this. I put two pi above so it doesn't get in the way of the graph, um, and plot our points, and sketch in a curve. And from here, we can just write the equation. So it's gonna be r equals sinusoidal axis is four. Uh, it's a negative cosine, so minus. Uh, I can go five in either direction, uh, up or down from the sinusoidal axis. So that's my amplitude. And we said it was cosine. So we get this. That's the polar equation. Um, if we graph it on a calculator, GeoGebra, whatever, um, it's gonna work. So let's try this one again, using that idea that we can kind of shift the angles a little bit. Um, so to start it up here, I'm gonna say when theta is zero, uh, I'm gonna put myself at this point. So when theta is zero, I'm facing positive x, but I go nine units along the negative x axis. So I get zero, negative nine. And then I'm gonna rotate from zero to pi over two. So I'm facing up, but I'm gonna end up at this point. So that means that when theta is pi over two, r is negative four. And this seems weird, but it's not so bad. Um, when theta is pi, I'm facing the negative x-axis. I'm gonna actually end up on the negative x-axis, so I get pi comma one. And then I'm gonna rotate again to three pi over two. Three pi over two, I'm facing down on the negative y-axis, 
and I move toward the positive y, so that's gonna be a negative r. So it's three pi over two, negative four. And then at two pi, I'm gonna end up at that starting point again, so it's also gonna have negative nine. Let's turn this into a rectangular graph. So plot the points. And again, it's exactly the same shape as the graph above it. Um, it's just a vertical shift. So let's put in the curve. Let's write the equation. So it's r equals sinusoidal axis is negative four. And then um, it's a negative cosine graph. Uh, the amplitude again is five. And we said it was cosine. And there you go. All right. So it's possible to write two, like, I don't want to call them obvious, but once you've done a lot of them, it, there are two that kind of jump out at you, two equations for each of these. Um, go with whichever works for you. Uh, in this example, the top one is the more traditional. Bottom one is something that you kind of end up with if you just go into it and start, you know, picking points and R's and thetas. Uh, but anyway, I hope you found this helpful and good luck.